Hey everyone, ready for another deep dive? Today we're tackling something that's super important for any business, big or small, the USP. The unique selling proposition. Exactly. And we're going to go way beyond those catchy taglines everyone throws around and really get into the nitty gritty of what makes a USP truly effective. You know, it's interesting when you think about it, a USP isn't just a marketing tactic. It's really the foundation of your entire brand. Like it's the DNA of your business. It impacts everything you do. Okay. I like where this is going. Yeah. Before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's make sure everyone's on the same page. What exactly is a USP? Like in the simplest terms possible. Well, at its core, a USP is that one thing that makes you different and most importantly, better than your competition. In the eyes of your customer. Right, exactly. It's the answer to that question every customer has. Why should I choose you? And it can't just be some generic thing like, oh, we have great customer service. You hear that everywhere. Exactly. It's got to be something truly unique, something specific and compelling that your competitors can't easily copy. It's like your secret weapon. Ah, so it's kind of like finding your purple cow, right? Mm -hmm. That thing that makes people stop and say, whoa, in a world full of boring brown cows. That's a perfect analogy. In a world where everyone's bombarded with information, your USP is what cuts through the noise. It's what makes you stand out, makes you memorable. Exactly. Okay, I have a confession. When I hear USP, I automatically think of those super famous taglines. Like? You know, like Nike's just do it or McDonald's, I'm loving it. But are those really the same thing as a USP? Those taglines are actually great examples of how a USP can be boiled down to a really powerful phrase, but they're just the tip of the iceberg. So there's more to it than just a catchy slogan. Way more. Think of it this way. The tagline is like a really catchy song, but the USP is the entire album with all its depth and complexity. I like that. So give me an example. Like how does that work with, say, Nike? Well, let's take Just Do It. On the surface, it's a motivational phrase, but underneath it reflects Nike's whole brand essence. It's about empowering athletes, pushing limits, and achieving goals. It makes you feel something. Exactly. And when you look at their marketing, their products, even their sponsorships, everything they do reinforces that message. The tagline is just the most visible part. Makes sense. It's like the tagline is what you hear, but the USP is the message behind the music. Yeah. It's about connecting with your audience on a deeper level, appealing to their aspirations and desires. Now, something you said earlier really got me thinking. You mentioned that a USP isn't just about shouting your differences from the rooftops. It's about positioning. Right. So it's not enough to just be unique. You have to strategically position yourself in the mind of your target customer. Exactly. It's about understanding how your customers see you in comparison to everyone else out there. So you're trying to own a specific space in their mental landscape. Yeah, you want to be the go-to solution for their specific needs. Now, this whole positioning thing makes me wonder, are there different types of USPs? I mean, some companies are all about price, like we're the cheapest. Yeah. But others focus on like emotional benefits. That's a great observation. And you're absolutely right. There are definitely different flavors of USPs out there. Some brands focus on value, like Amazon. It's all about the price. Right. While others, like L'Oreal, tap into emotion. Because you're worth it. Exactly. Some might highlight their cutting edge technology or maybe their commitment to sustainability. So there's no one size fits all. Nope. The key is to find the USP that best aligns with your brand, your target market, and your overall goals. What truly makes you different and desirable. Okay. I'm feeling inspired, but also a little overwhelmed. Seems like there's a lot to consider. Where do we even begin? Well, you actually hit on a key point earlier. Understanding your target audience, that's the foundation. Right. If you don't know who you're talking to, how can you create a message that resonates with them? And that's where we'll pick up in part two of our deep dive. We'll explore how to really get to know your target audience inside and out. Sounds good. I can't wait to dig deeper. I think we've laid a really good foundation for understanding just how powerful a USP can be. Absolutely. We've gone beyond those surface level taglines and started exploring the strategic thinking that makes a USP truly effective. And everyone listening, make sure you join us for part two, where we'll get into the practical steps for actually crafting your own unique selling proposition. It's time to unleash your inner purple cow. Welcome back. Last time we were talking about how important it is to really know your target audience. Yeah, that's like step one in this whole USP journey. Absolutely. 
You've got to know who you're talking to before you can figure out what makes you stand out to them. Right. It's like if you're trying to hit a target, you got to know where the bullseye is, right? Exactly. So let's talk about that target. We need to understand their needs, their desires, what keeps them up at night. Okay. So I'm picturing like a detective's board here. What are some of the clues we should be looking for? Well, you've got your basic demographics, age, location, occupation, that kind of stuff. Mm. But you got to go deeper than that. Deeper. Yeah, like what are their values? What's their lifestyle like? What are their pain points? What are they passionate about? So we're building a whole profile. You got it. The more detailed, the better. Mm. Once you have that crystal clear picture of who your ideal customer is, then you can start to size up the competition. Okay, so now we're putting on our spy gear. Exactly. We need to figure out what they're doing, what their strengths and weaknesses are. And most importantly, what are their USPs? Right. What are they claiming to be the best at? Where are they falling short? So we're not just trying to copy them. We're looking for those gaps, those opportunities where our USP can really shine. Exactly. Maybe everyone's focusing on price, but you offer incredible personalized service. Or maybe everyone's all about technology and you offer a more human touch. This is making a lot of sense. We're figuring yeah. out who we're serving, what they want, and what the competition isn't doing. That's how we find our unique angle. Exactly. Now, once you've got a handle on your audience and your competitors, it's time to articulate that one powerful benefit you offer. This is where things get really exciting. Think of it like this. If you had to describe your business's superpower in one sentence, what would it be? Whoa, that's a good question. Right. Are you the fastest, the most reliable, the most sustainable? Do you offer the best customer experience? What's that one thing that sets you apart? It's like boiling everything down to its purest form. Exactly. And remember, this isn't about listing every single feature you have. It's about finding that core benefit that truly resonates with your audience. It's that perfect intersection between what you're good at what your customer wants, and what the competition isn't offering. You got it. And don't be afraid to challenge yourself here. Really ask yourself, is this truly unique? Is it compelling enough to make someone choose me? Can I back it up? It's got to be real, not just some fancy marketing fluff. Absolutely. Now, we've talked a lot about finding your USP, but what about communicating it effectively? You can have the greatest USP in the world, but if you don't tell your story the right way... It's like a tree falling in the forest, right? Exactly. So let's talk about storytelling. This is where you take that dry, factual USP and turn it into something captivating. All right, story time. And the key here is to remember, your customer is the hero of this story. Not your business. Right. Your business, your product, your USP, it's all just a supporting character. Your USP is like the magic tool that helps the hero overcome their challenges. So it's not about bragging about how great we are. It's about showing how we empower our customers to be great. Exactly. Think about those iconic taglines we talked about earlier. Nike's Just Do It isn't about Nike. It's about the customer's drive to push themselves. And I'm loving it. Isn't about McDonald's ingredients. It's about that feeling you get when you bite into a burger. You're getting it. So when you're telling your USP story, ask yourself, what does my product or service help my customers achieve? What problem does it solve? What feeling does it evoke? Man, this is starting to feel less like marketing and more like writing a movie. That's a great way to think about it. Your USP story needs to be engaging and needs to connect with your audience on an emotional level. Okay, I'm ready to write my blockbuster USP movie. Any last tips for making sure it's a hit? Keep it simple, keep it authentic, keep it focused on the customer, use vivid language, paint a picture, and make sure it aligns with your brand's values. So it's got to feel connected, like a cohesive story. Right. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, OK, I found my USP. I've crafted my story. I'm ready to go. But hold on. There's one more piece to this puzzle. Oh, oh, what's the catch? A USP isn't a set it and forget it kind of thing. It needs to evolve and adapt as your business grows and as the market changes. Wait, so we can't just figure it out once and call it a day? Nope. It's an ongoing process. Think of it like tending a garden. You need to water it, fertilize it, prune it, and make adjustments to make sure it stays healthy. So how do we know when our USP needs a little TLC? Well, there are some signs to watch out for. Maybe your marketing isn't performing as well as it used to. Maybe your sales are down or you're getting feedback that your messaging feels off. We got to pay attention to what the market's telling us. Exactly. Don't be afraid to experiment. Tweak your messaging, test different approaches, see what works. Your USP should be a living, breathing thing that can adapt as needed. So it's a journey, not a destination. That's a great way to put it. 
But it's a journey worth taking because when you nail your USP, it can truly transform your business. It helps you attract the right customers, build loyalty, and stand out from the crowd. I'm feeling really inspired. This has been an amazing deep dive so far. We've gone from the basics to the storytelling to the importance of staying flexible. And the best part is we're not done yet. In part three, we'll get into some real world examples of companies that are killing it with their USPs. Can't wait. For everyone listening, make sure to tune in for part three, where we'll unpack even more USP goodness and give you even more actionable tips. All right, welcome back everyone. For this final part of our USP deep dive, we're gonna get into some real world examples companies that are absolutely nailing it. Yeah, it's always helpful to see these concepts in action, see how they play out in the real world. Totally. So let's start with a big one, Apple. What makes them so successful? What's their USP? Well, with Apple, it really boils down to design and innovation. They create this seamless user experience that people just love. Yeah, their products are always so sleek, so intuitive. It's like they just get it. Exactly. They're not just selling you a phone or a computer. They're selling a lifestyle, a feeling of being part of something special. Even their packaging is an experience. It's like you're unwrapping a work of art. Right. And that feeling, that attention to detail, it extends to everything they do. Their stores, their customer service, their marketing, it all re reinforces that premium cutting edge brand identity. And they've built this incredibly loyal following. People don't just like Apple, they love Apple. That's the power of a strong USP. It creates a sense of community, a shared belief in the brand's values. Okay, let's switch gears a bit. What about Google? Seems like their USP is pretty straightforward. They're the kings of search. Yeah, their dominance in search is undeniable. But their USP is actually a bit deeper than that. It's not just about providing information. It's about organizing the world's information and making it accessible to everyone. So it's not just about finding what you need. It's about making sense of it all. Exactly. And you see that in all of their products, from Gmail to Google Maps. They're always innovating, always expanding their reach. But their core mission remains the same. It's crazy how they've become such a part of our everyday lives. I mean, Googling is literally a verb now. It's a testament to how powerful a clear and compelling USP can be. They found a need, solved it brilliantly, and never stopped innovating. All right, let's talk about a company that's maybe a little less tech-focused. What about a brand that's built its USP around something totally different? Hmm. How about Tawny MS Shoes? They've really nailed the whole social impact angle. Ah, yeah. For every pair you buy, they donate a pair to someone in need. Exactly. Their USP isn't just about shoes, it's about making a difference in the world. And that resonates really strongly with their target audience, who are often younger, more socially conscious consumers. Right. They've turned buying shoes into a feel-good experience. You're not just getting a product, you're contributing to a good cause. They're making a statement. Exactly. And that creates a powerful emotional connection with the brand. It's not just about the shoes anymore, it's about being part of something bigger. I love these examples. They really show how diverse USPs can be mm -hmm. and how a well-defined USP can truly drive success. Absolutely. Whether you're focused on innovation, social impact, customer experience, or anything else, the key is to find what makes you unique and communicate it effectively. It's so easy to get caught up in the big names and the catchy slogans, but what matters most is finding what's authentic to your brand. Right. What makes you stand out from the crowd? What do you offer that no one else can? It's about digging deep, understanding your strengths, your audience, your competitors, and then telling your story in a way that connects with people on an emotional level. It's a journey. It takes time. It takes effort, but it's so worth it in the end. Totally. All right. So to wrap things up, what's the one piece of advice you'd give to our listeners who are on their own USP journey? Don't be afraid to experiment. Don't be afraid to iterate and refine your message as you go. Your USP isn't set in stone. It can evolve and adapt as your business grows. So it's an ongoing process. Exactly. But it's a process that can lead to incredible results. It's the foundation for building a brand that stands out, resonates with your audience, and ultimately achieves lasting success. I think that's a perfect note to end on. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive, everyone. We hope you found it valuable. And remember, the most important thing is to find what makes you unique, what makes you special, and let that shine through in everything you do.